in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. One more time. Good morning. Good morning. That's much, 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 much better. Much, much better. And it's much better because the Lord requires your attention today. Because I'm going to ask you if you heard it. Did you hear it? Did you hear the gospel? Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Okay. Because unfortunately, unfortunately, there were people there and they didn't hear it. There were people there and they didn't see it. This gospel should be a feast. This gospel should be a feast. We should all be here. We should be celebrating in our Sunday best. We should be celebrating a massive feast. One who was demon possessed, blind and mute has been healed. What a feast, what a joy. But you know what? This gospel starts with a demon possessed, blind and mute man. And it also ends with a demon-possessed, blind, and mute man, or group. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't end up on that side. We don't want to end up demon-possessed, blind, and mute, right? Raise your hand if that's the team you want to be on. Okay, good, no hands, right? Hopefully, unless you're joking, I pray you're joking. <laughs> that's not the team we want to be on. You see, the thing is about Christ, the Lord Christ, is He comes to heal. And it, there's, there were people there who started to recognize him. They started to ask, is this the son of David? What a wonderful question. Is this the son of David? Is he present? Is he here? Can I see him? Do I know him? Have I recognized him? Where is he? And you see, there's a secret as to why. There's a secret as to why can be in the presence of God and not see him. Because once people got wind that God was present, the Pharisees rose up and said, no, he's not. He's working, he's working casting out devils by the devil himself, right? They started to post accusations at him. And of course, we read this and we're like, oh, you Pharisees, you missed it. You missed it. He was there and we feel bad for them. And we're like, we are never going to be the Pharisees. Are we? Are we never going to be the Pharisees? I pray that we're never become the Pharisees. But the Pharisees were missing something. The Pharisees were missing something and it's something that I pray we don't miss. And I promise you, as this gospel was being read from last night to today, right, the Lord was convicting me, convicting me in a very real way, and I believe he's convicting all of us. In order for you to rejoice over the healing over of, of another, you must be aware of your own sickness. In order for you to truly rejoice over the healing of another, you must be aware of your own sickness, of your own condition. We see it all the time in the physical space, right? My eyes hurt, I go to a wonderful doctor, I am ready for, to meet somebody who's got an eye problem because I want to tell them, I know Dr. John, right? Or Dr. whoever, right? Okay, we see it all the time, right? We love to share when we meet good physicians. They healed this, they healed that, he gave me this medication. You should, just yesterday, somebody, my memory was going, somebody was giving me all the stuff that their doctor told them that they should do. It's wonderful. We love to help people heal. But spiritually, that joy sometimes is lacking, and it's not lacking because we don't want to rejoice in others' healings. It's lacking because we haven't yet worked towards our own spiritual healing. Today this gospel is asking you flat out. It's very, very, very strong. What is your spiritual condition? When God is present, do you see him or do you not see him? Are you deaf? 
blind and demon possessed. Deafness, right? Are, are, you, are you blind? Are you, sorry, b- mute, blind, mute, right? This, this blind person could not see God. Right? How many of us really see God? I'm not just talking about like come into church, right? I'm talking about how many of us spend day to day seeing God, interacting with him. And you know where he is? He's not just in your, of course I want him in your Bible. I want you in your Bible. Read your Bible. But you know where else God is? He's in your spouse. He's in your child. He's in your coworker who you hate. He's in your neighbor who you, who you fight over the grass with, right? The Lord is in every one of us. Do you see him? And then when you see him, are you able to praise him? The mute man, the mute person is the one who cannot pray. The one who cannot lift up his heart in praise. And all that the devil is trying to do, and we have to be real about his presence and real about his effort, he is trying to keep us blind and keep us mute. Because the one who cannot see God is the one who does not praise God, and the one who does not praise God is the one who has no relationship with God. This is all that the devil is trying to do. That's been his game from the beginning. And he doesn't come saying, hey, it's me, devil, follow me. That's never his way. He comes to you and says, hey, do you want to be like God? Eat of that fruit. You want to be, you were created to be like God, Eve. Why don't you just eat, but do it my way. I have a way. The devil has a way and God's have a way. And let me tell you something. There is never a time where those two ways are the same. Never. And so if we don't acknowledge God, if we are not allowing, as he says in the, in the end of the, and we'll go, we'll, we'll talk about how, right? Because it's important to understand how can we resist? And it's all in the readings of today, right? But the Lord says, if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Are you, are you aware of your dignity? Are you aware that you are a bearer of the Spirit of God? Are you aware that the kingdom of God is within you? Not because you are great, not because you are worthy, but because He loves you. Because you've accepted and you've become aware of your spiritual need. You know who doesn't go to get well? The one who doesn't think he's sick. So am I just walking in here thinking, hey, I'm well, I'm good. Christ will be there. (laughs) It'll be okay. But you know what? I'm too busy worrying about what this one's wearing and what that one's doing and this one did on on, on TikTok or Facebook or whatever, right? What is it that we're coming in to see? Who is it that we're coming in to be with? What is it that we're coming to experience? The work doesn't start here. The work starts at home. This is a tough message, but we all need to come to the truth that we are all sick. This should be the most comforting message. Everyone here is sick. That makes us equal. No one is greater than the other. Everyone here is in need. The reason why we always ask, anybody ever ask this as you're sitting amongst friends? Why are there no more miracles? Why don't we see miracles? You know who's able to bring God to the needs of others? The one who's accepted God's healing in in his own need. I can't refer someone to the physician if I don't know him. Yes? Has anybody referred somebody to a doctor they've never been to? So then you can't refer somebody to God if you don't have experience with him. Yes? You with me? Okay. So what do we do? Because this is not a hopeless gospel. This is a hopeful gospel. I know that I said at the end, the Pharisees leave blind. They don't see God. And they leave mute because they can't praise him. And thus they reject God. And thus they've accepted for themselves the power of the enemy, the power of the devil. Thus they leave demon-possessed. But that's not us. That's not our story. That's not how this ends. That's not how this ends. That's not how this is going to end. 
It is going to end. We are going to be healed. We are going to know him. We are going to praise him. And it starts in our homes. St. Paul tells us in the, in the Catholic, in the Pauline epistle today in Corinthians, he tells us, there, he tells us many things, but we're going to focus on two, song, uh, two verses, okay? First of all, they're verses 13, chapter 16, 13, 14. 16, 13, 14. Very easy to memorize. Very easy to remember. 13, 14, okay? Watch. Watch. We have let ourselves go in our homes. Me. I allow things into my home that I wouldn't allow two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, whatever. It's not just my home, into my own person. Be honest with yourself. Are you watchful? What allowances have you made for yourself that you weren't making before? Watch. Be watchful. Stand. Stand. You know, <laughs> I will admit, and I'm not, forgive me, I will admit this, right, and I'm asking for forgiveness. There are times prayer is like lying down and I can't stand. Is God not worth my ability to stand? Stand. Stand fast. Stand fast. You need healing. We run to the doctor, but I can't even stand in front of God. I promise you, I'm talking to Matthew Shad. I'm talking to myself. This is just a crazy man speaking to himself in front of a bunch of people. I need to stand. We need to stand. We need to praise. When we come here together as a congregation, we have to stand. He's here. Watch, stand, fast in the faith, be brave, say no, say no, don't be weak, you're not weak, you are strong, the one who is in you is stronger than the one who is in the world, the one who is in you, God himself is stronger than the one who is in the world, it's time to say no, it's time to resist, resist the devil, that's what it says in the, in the, in the Catholic, right? Resist the devil. Acknowledge him, but resist him. Not to accept him. Not acknowledging him to accept. You're acknowledging him to resist him. Fight him. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave. Be strong. You are not weak. You are not weak. You are immensely strong. You are capable of moving mountains. It's been done. You are capable of healing the sick. It's been done. You are capable even of raising the dead. Guess what? It's been done. Be strong. Be brave. It's time. That's it. I feel like what God is saying today is you cannot walk out of here having missed me. You can't. You are either going to be with me or against me. That's literally what he says in the verses to follow after this gospel. No more. Be strong. Be brave. Resist the devil. Right? Let all that you do be done in love my brothers and sisters, the reason why we're not seeing miracles, the reason why others aren't being healed is because we ourselves are not coming in love. We might come in judgment. We might come in desire to praise ourselves. We might come in all these other means except love. But guess what? God did all things in love because he is love. He came because he's love. He healed because he's love. He, 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 he resurrected because he's love. He died because he's love. What about me? And if I am not love, then I better get close to love. Because what does St. James tell us, right? After he says, resist the devil, right? Resist the devil, submit to God. Submit to God, resist the devil. Draw near to God. My brothers and sisters, I'm, I, God is not far. God is not far. The gospel of last night's Vespers was the one of the ship, right, when they were in the, in the sea, and the ship was and swayed. And we all love that gospel, right? We've all been in turmoil. We've all felt, God, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And then we're like, oh, he was right there. Oh, he was right there. How many times has the Lord carried you out of something and given you victory to prove that he was right there? And then after that, we turn away and we go our own way again. The Lord is not far. The Lord is not far. How far would you drive 
to meet the best cancer doctor in the world. How far would you go to heal your son? To get your son in front of the greatest doctor, the greatest healer. What lengths would you go to to heal your body? All those lengths that you would go, let me tell you, you don't have to travel that far for him. The great physician is here. He's here. He's here. And guess where else he wants to be? In you. He will heal you from within. He will heal you from within. Let him in. I'm begging us. I'm begging us as a church. I'm begging us as, as, in the, as persons. I'm begging us as fathers, as mothers, as husbands, as wives, as brothers, as sisters, as every relational truth that you have, right? Bring him in. You bring him in. He will heal the discord within you, and you can begin to be healing to others. Stop praying for your wife to change. Start praying for God to work in you and he will change you and change your wife through you. Same goes for wives praying for their husbands, right? Same thing, okay? It's not just, a, right? You want to see healing in the world? Allow yourself to be healed. We cannot leave here today blind Mute and demon-possessed. That can't be acceptable. That will not be acceptable because he doesn't want that. He loves you. There's a, very strong, there's a very strong statement at the end of this. I don't want to end on this. I want to end again. I'm going to end with the Lord's words. But I, there's a, Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Right? I'm not trying to scare you. But do you understand how little we allow good in our own lives? It's not that God benefits from my prayer or God will increase from my fasting or God will change in any way if I serve my brothers. I will change. I will increase. I will grow. I will experience him greater in a greater way, in a truer way. I'm the one who gets closer to him. I'm the one who draws near to him. To not do good for your own self. I'm not even talking about doing good to others. I'm saying do good for yourself. When you stand up and pray, you are doing good for yourself. When you spend time in scripture, you're doing good for yourself. When you serve your family, you're doing good for yourself, not for others. Don't fall into this habit of not doing good. It says about the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Acts that he went about doing good. We have to be doing good, doing good for ourselves and doing thus we can do good for others. Because as the Lord said, and we'll conclude with his words, because his words are life, and his words are light, and his words are healing, and his words are truth, and his words are everything. I know we're struggling. I know, I know. I wish we weren't struggling. I wish I would like come before you and be like, hey, how's it going? And everybody be like, oh, everything's great, right? And we just start praising and feasting, but it is hard, it's hard. Because the enemy doesn't leave us alone. He wants to confuse us. He wants to trip us up. He wants to harm us. He wants us to be lost. But the Lord is saying today, he's saying today these last words again, what about this possibility? What about the possibility that if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. What about the possibility that today you are a bearer of the kingdom of God? It's possible. Not only is it possible, it's true. We can't continue to walk around as defeated, as blind and mute. When you have the chance to see him, go see him. Spend time with him. When you have the chance to praise him, praise, right? Let our words be words of praise to each other, right? What if, what if we started greeting each other with praise? Praise towards God. Because he's in us. Because his truth is present. Because he is near. And because the kingdom of God has come upon you and me and upon all of us. May his kingdom always grow and flourish forever unto the ages of all ages. Amen.